Hey, I'm Rhonda and I'm funny about money. And today I want to talk to you about a financial book review that I'm doing. So sit tight. We'll go over this book. The title of today's book is everything you need to know about personal finance in a thousand words. And the author is CJ Carlson. Now, I discovered this book on, of course, Amazon, because I have a Kindle, and I am a huge Amazon fan, and everyone who knows me knows that. So, let's get right into this book, because there are some opinions that I definitely have on it. I've made note cards. I know. So, to start with, it is literally five short chapters. If this was a, a paper book, it would look more like a pamphlet, and... Um, it kind of would make a fantastic blog post, maybe. But unfortunately, it is a very general and vague book overall. So let me just start off with its short little chapter one. The name of chapter one is Spending. Something I do agree with is the author says not to use credit cards. I agree with that, um, but if you do use credit cards, the author states to pay them off monthly. However, um, I think you should pay it off as quickly as possible. So. If you are, say, traveling out of town and using your credit card, then so be it. But make sure that you don't spend more than what you could pay off as soon as you got home to make that payment. You want to pay it off quickly. I have a credit card to a certain store that I use because of reward points. And as soon as I get home, I take the receipt, I go into my bank, and I send the money right on over. I don't want to incur any interest charges or any fees or anything else like that. So that's why I go ahead and, and handle it that way. So be careful what you purchase with a credit card if you use them. Some people just should not even use them. And I do agree with um, some people not using them, but the author doesn't say that. And I think he should say that some people shouldn't even use credit cards because if you use them, they're just so easy to just get out of hand. And that's something you should be careful with. So also in chapter one, the author says not to track your spending on every penny. I couldn't disagree more. And the author actually contradicts himself a little bit later on in the book with this with this uh, viewpoint that he has on not tracking your spending. It's basically he's saying don't budget. Don't worry about every little penny that you spend. However, if you're super financially strapped, you're definitely gonna worry about every penny that you're spending. So he also says not to buy things you can't afford. I'm not allowed to say what my reaction was to that. Let's just say no and an S word. Yes. Really? Don't buy things you can't afford? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. We know. Okay. All right. And here's one thing that I like where he's going, but I don't necessarily agree is good. He says, think only 60 seconds about small purchases and 24 hours for large ones. Ha. Huh. No. No, what do you consider small? What do you consider large? You may need to put some research and effort and time. You know, you don't just run out and buy a car or a house. You, those are large, quite large purchases. And in my house, we consider anything over $100 to be considerably a chunk of change. I actually, in my brain, think anything over 20 bucks is a little much. So you just need to slow down and think, do you really need that? Do you really want it? I'm a big fan of putting off the purchase. Let's just wait and see how long do, you know, do I really need it and will I change my mind later? Okay. Chapter two, saving. I'm all about it. I agree that start saving early is the best way. The sooner you start saving in life, the more money you're going to accrue as long as you don't take that out and spend it. That's a given. We all know that. Now, I'm in my 40s, so it's a little late start, but it doesn't mean you can't right? What if you're in your 30s, 20s? The sooner the better. It doesn't matter. He says to have six months in savings, you know, six months of expenses and living expenses and savings. I agree with that. What I disagree about is how he goes about telling you how to do things. And he's not really detailed. Once again, it's very, very short book as it is intended. But I feel like it's just more of a, look, here's a sample of my writing than an actual Here's how to help your life book. So what I disagree on is says to take what you spend, subtract that from your income and then save the rest. That's not a very good saving strategy. And the only time that really works is 
in the beginning when you first start and you're budgeting and you really don't have a lot of money because you know the house payment is due and food is a thing yeah I understand then in that time in the beginning you know you do what you can if you can only save 10 bucks a week save 10 bucks a week 10 bucks a month 10 bucks a month I'm fine but when you reach a point where you can start by taking 20 30 percent of your income off your paycheck it's always better to do it that way because you will find a way to make it work you know and I'm not saying set yourself up where bill collectors are banging on your door and repossessing your vehicle that's not what I'm saying I'm saying get yourself in a position that's what it's all about so but he didn't just say to save 20% a month you know so I don't understand also I forgot to add this in this chapter he actually I'm gonna read this quote about using a budget and saving see I told you he, he goes into it I agree with that he but he says use a budget here is a quote from the author CJ Carlson budgeting helps you understand spending habits develop structure to help you save every month and allows you to pivot and adjust your spending habits in order to reach your savings goals now I agree with this statement wholeheartedly that's why when he says don't track every penny but then he turns around and tells you to budget I'm thinking okay why is he contradicting himself it's it's a little conflicting and I, I think you can budget properly and then you can set yourself you know a spend section like I have a weekly allowance I don't but you can just say that I have a weekly allowance of 20 bucks I can spend it on whatever I want that's budgeting okay that's budgeting so if you budget your loss money then that's that's budgeting that works okay you have to do what works for you All right so let's go into chapter three that making more money is a positive thing trust me I agree with that I also believe that uh, life is short and we have to think about the decisions that we're making so while we want to earn more money we don't want to be there from 8 a.m. till 8 a.m. till 8 a.m. till 8 a.m. you do need to have a life I understand but I'm a big fan of making more money the only thing here is he says um, keep learning I agree with that work on yourself always that's a given start a side business that's what a lot of people say cut back on TV and internet surfing because really those are just kind of time sucking so I understand why he says that I agree with some of that that's okay what I disagree with is that this section is really vague of course because it's only a thousand words and just general information and kind of information everybody kind of already knows it doesn't really offer any ideas or any experience or knowledge on how you go about earning more money you know he doesn't talk about asking for a raise he just talks about improving your skills so that you can get a raise well some people can't financially afford to pay to go to class and things like that what can they do instead like what are their options and he doesn't even explain anything like that no details whatsoever just here go get more money do a side gig you know the, the usual chapter 4 investing I agree with using any and all opportunities at work like the author says to use your 401k plan and if where you work offers that absolutely you should definitely have that that's pre-tax you know income so if you're able to get enough of that chunk off it lowers your amount that you pay in taxes something's better than nothing I'm a big fan of something is better than nothing okay I believe in that however unfortunately the author doesn't go into any other savings things like some people could be conservative and just get CDs at the bank or something which that's not the best way to increase your money but some people may need that type of an investment to keep them from accessing their money but if you do a six month a year two year three year CD you know if you do a six month one then say you lost your job you had six months of income saved up at the end of six months you would have that CD and you would have access to that money so that sort of thing that's real life and I understand you know but once again something is better than nothing and you want to do the best that you can with what you have and then go from there that's all you can do honestly right so the author fails to discuss or mention other methods of investing 
And I feel like um, now we have things like acorns, stash, things like that you could use. And, um, you know, I know this book was written a few years ago, but maybe they could update it. It is a Kindle book after all. I mean, I feel like he could have at least made a list or something, you know, to cut back on his word count. <laughs> so, chapter five, make life simple. I agree with that. I'm a huge fan of the KISS theory. Keep it simple, stupid. Totally. Try to keep it simple. And really take a step back and say, am I making this money thing more complicated than it has to be? Now, make things simple. I agree. Automatic deposits. I'm a fan. Um, I like to, I actually do this. I have an auto deposit for my investments and it just takes it out every week. Um, and I like it. It's just a little bitty, tiny amount. And you know, you can start off with $5 a week auto. You can afford that. Stop drinking the coffee. We'll do that one later. What I disagree is his auto bill pay. Now I know people who do auto bill pay and it works out fine. And if you make enough money where you don't spend more money, then you're doing better anyway. But I'm talking to the person who is literally down to the nitty gritty and can barely even afford ramen noodles. If you set your stuff up on auto bill pay, you might go spend money and not know how much that bill is going to be. Like your water bill, your electric bill, you know, your credit card bill could vary. You know, all these variables are in play. And the more variables you have, the less control you have of what's going on. Right? So I think... You should probably be more on a using your bill pay from your bank and you be more in control of what's going on. In conclusion of his book, he even has conclusion. So it was more like an essay. Yeah, essay. Conclusion. I feel that this author could have done better. And I feel like this makes a nice outline for a book. Those are the words that I, I told my friend. I was like, it makes a good outline for a book, but it's not really a good book. I don't recommend reading this book because it's about a waste of five to ten minutes of your time, depending on if you can push through. I remember being stuck on chapter two going, I don't think I can go any further. But I had to in order to do this review. I had to push through. And I really do wish I could get my five to ten minutes back. And that's how you're most likely going to feel after it. And when you look this book up on Goodreads and Amazon and such, it is a free download. I do like that. I love free download books. However, your quality may not be as good. And um, unfortunately, this could have been a better book. This author does have other titles available to read. And my friend said that I should um, read them and review them as well. And maybe I will, but just after reading this, I kind of don't want to. Like, reading this book uh, by this author thinking this could be better. And if this is a representation of his writing of his other books. I'm not really kind of interested because I just don't feel that this book was a useful book. I don't feel that it's worth the time and it wasn't to me very useful. There are other books that you could be reading that may be better. And the fact is there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of personal finance books. Oh my gosh, where do we start? This one to me is just a total waste of time. And the author should either just take it away you use it for a blog or I don't know rewrite it and make it more than a thousand words and do a better job and that's really all I have to say about it and I'm sorry that I didn't love this book because I love it when I love a book and there are some finance books that I have read that I do love and I will be reviewing those so if you like my reviews don't like my reviews love me hate me don't really care hit the subscribe and like button and thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you again soon.